May, I think it is May, right? If this video goes up by the end of the month on time, it will probably be a miracle because my life is about to completely change this month. As you have probably already seen, I have had my little puppy River come home and that should be up already. If not, I've probably had a sleep deprived mental breakdown and not been able to film or edit anything, but hopefully, fingers crossed, I can carry on doing some sort of normal life things because I thought I had so much time to pre-film my videos and I haven't, so still gonna be scrambling around trying to do things. First thing on my list is I've got all of the rescue male mice, my two boys and then two other boys that are going home together, so I need to do double intros, a pair and another pair together, which should be interesting. Hopefully they're ready by now and their hormones have died down to be put together because they are then gonna be adopted out to the owner, finally. It feels like such a long time in the making, but I'm really excited for them. And the best news, the best news I've had in a long time is the guinea pigs that I have struggled to find a home for. They came to me in the rescue in November, so over six months ago. When they were six months old, they're now a year old, and they've had no interest up until this point. But they're finally getting adopted, so that's gonna be such a happy moment, and I will try to film it too, so. Yeah, lots to get done in this vlog. I'm mostly looking forward to having this room back in some sort of order, and mostly for the rats during their free roam. They have been such good sports for having to have it temporarily in the bathroom. I think they secretly enjoyed it and they spent most of the time trying to get into the toilet, which was funny but also not because they've got all these nice toys to interact with and the best thing for them was the toilet. So gonna be looking forward to having them back in this room with more space to run around and hopefully I can find a spare moment in life as it gets crazy with the puppy to obviously still free room them and spend time with them. But yes, I'm gonna intro the mice now and hope they don't murder each other. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So mouse intros are going okay, they're still in the carrier stage at the moment. I definitely would say there is a lot more tension than when you're introducing some female mice. I definitely would say it is a bit harder, but they're doing okay at this stage. And if you are getting male mice neutered and thinking of doing this, it's recommended to wait three weeks post neuter before you introduce them to females or other males. It takes them about two weeks after the surgery to be infertile and not risk impregnating any mice so definitely wait at least two weeks maybe three weeks just to play it safe but sometimes it can take up to six weeks for all of their hormones to leave their body and not be as aggressive so i'm just going to watch them very very carefully i wanted to do this as early as possible but not obviously rush it too much because 
Next week I will have a nine week old puppy that is taking up a lot of my time so I wanted to give these boys all of my undivided attention whilst I can. But yeah, if I do see any issues and they are being a bit too aggressive, I will just split them, put them back into their individual cages and then try again closer to the six week mark just to be safe but so far it seems okay there has been a bit of chasing and squeaking but nothing too serious so fingers crossed it stays that way so we have got lovely pontus being adopted today he has been neutered obviously and now it's his turn to go home because all of the other mice now have company and he really needs to so he's being adopted to live with some of his younger sisters that already got adopted and I'm really excited for him. He looks completely different to how he did as a baby. He has got much, much more fur, but he's still kind of wrinkly and patchy in places. So he is so cute, I love him. I'm just so excited for him to finally get adopted. I have been waiting at the window all morning and I've just had a really exciting delivery. So I did a thing, this could either be the biggest waste of money ever or a really good idea and I've never used a wheel in all of my time of owning rats, you don't have to and there is a bit of a gamble that they just won't use it so I finally decided, you know what, I want to try, I feel like my younger two, Kinder and Aero, are so active they're a bit more like females personality wise so I think if anyone is going to use this they will, the other two could really benefit from more exercise but I doubt they will use this as anything more than a toilet to be honest so I wasn't really going to pay full price. This is a Tic Tac wheel, the website is tictacwheels.co.uk I think. There's not many wheels in the UK, the US that are a good suitable size. You can get things like bucket wheels or wheels aimed at hedgehogs. This one is 16 inches, you can see it compared to the cage, it's pretty big and that is the size you have to have for males, around 14 inches for females and 16 inches for males. So I got this second hand and I think if you were to buy this full price, brand new from the website with like shipping and postage, it would be well over £60. So I think in total with about £6 postage, I paid about £50 for this. So it is quite the investment. So I just need to give it a little bit of a clean. It's got all the fixings in this bag and then try to work out how to attach this and just pray this stupid cage doesn't bust the bars and the bars don't fall off. I think to be honest the bars on the side are a bit stronger than the ones vertically so horizontally? Yes, horizontally. So I'm thinking of putting it on this side. I've already kind of cleared a gap. Need to take a few more things out but I'm gonna put it in and see if they care. I doubt they will but I might set up a little spy camera just to hopefully catch them maybe using it. Fingers crossed. I'm having to look at reference pictures on their website to know exactly how this is supposed to go. One of the screws dropped down into the bedding as I was doing that and I now can't get my hand back up to put it in. Am I about to take the entire thing off to try again just for the same thing to happen? No, I'm not. As with everything in life, I need like three more pairs of hands. Um, but it doesn't seem maybe a little bit wobbly, but I think that's more the way that I've put it on. Doesn't seem to be missing the extra screws, so I'm going to put this in my safe. And the next time I can be bothered to almost kill myself putting this thing in, I will try again to put all four in, but yeah, it looks pretty good to me. I feel like I need to show them how it works with positive reinforcement, so I've got a very well-loved tube of malt paste they've made another entrance because just one was not enough so I think Arrow is the only one awake right now I'm gonna try to show him how to run on this what's this great thing in your cage what's this scary huh come on then come on really Good boy. <laughs> Good boy, you're doing it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Good boy. Oh. oh. <laughs> Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Wow, you're doing it.
both pairs of boys are doing really good in their intros. It has been over a week, I think, and they're in kind of larger enclosures. They have been given a few things that are all kind of open, and they're not going to get trapped in and fight, so I have been taking it a little bit slower, and it has been a bit harder than with regular female introductions or neutered males that have been neutered for a good while. There have been a few scuffles, but also so, so many positive behaviours. They are always playing these two and always grooming each other. It's so, so cute. They are just so playful. So I think these two are definitely a good match. I'd say my two kind of gave me more issues. With the introductions, they have been going a lot slower, but they're now in... Hello, buddy. Look at you. You are so silly looking. They're now in a much more set-up enclosure. They've got sprays, places to hide, but not too many places, again, that they could get stuck. But we're doing good, aren't we? So Hector and Percy are actually getting adopted at the end of next week, so I'm not going to bother trying to upgrade them and put them into the next stage of introductions. I'm just going to keep them in their size whilst their bond is stable, and then when they go home, their new owner can continue introductions in a slightly bigger setup. So they're doing really good at the moment, and then at the weekend next week, I see you Hector, they're going to get adopted. So just going to keep them in this, and then with my two boys, if they continue... Being well behaved, not having any arguments or fighting, they're eventually going to go into an Alaska. I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but I'm just going to keep these boys living separately to my other mice just for now, just until my super, super old mouse Flurry passes away. I'm not going to subject him to crazy baby mouse energy, although they are like four months old now, so not really babies, but I'm just going to keep them separate. Um, until that happens and then do a big group introduction so they seem to be okay with that do you want me to lower that for you good boy he loves being up high don't you you love a good hammock i shall go and find you a flat one <laughs> I took what is probably the world's worst quality video the other day of these two playing when I first put them into this enclosure and it's not the best quality but it does really highlight just how important it is for even male mice to have company. These two were popcorning around and playing and grooming and honestly made the entire thing worth it. Yes, it can be expensive to new to male mice and it can be incredibly difficult to find a vet to do this but just seeing them so happy with each other it's just so rewarding, so I will put that video in. Please, please consider it if it is an option for you because they thrive so much when they have company. Excuse this huge thing of mouse supplies behind me. I decided to deep clean all of their wooden toys and now that they're dry, I've realized I don't have enough places to store all of the mouse supplies I've acquired over the last like six months or so. It's either in their enclosure or in the like storage things here and they're all full, so not really sure what I'm going to do with that, but tomorrow I'm taking the guinea pigs to their new home. They're going way, way up north. I think it's like a four or five hour trip up north for them. And I'm driving them a little bit of the way just to hopefully help break up that journey a bit for her. So not something that all rescues usually offer, but these guinea pigs have been in my rescue for six months. They were six months old when they came in and they're now fully grown and a year old and I've not seen them in a while, so they're gonna be absolutely massive. And if the right home comes along and I can help out a little bit to make it possible, then I'm going to because I've been desperate for them to find a home for such a long time. So I'm gonna drive them and take them tomorrow. I'm slightly worried because it's gonna be pretty hot. And my tiny car does not have any air con, so definitely not ideal for transporting animals. And especially now that I've got a dog, I can't be putting her in a hot car, so I'm looking to get a new car, which is not really ideal timing. I literally don't have a spare second right now to be car shopping. I'm thinking maybe a Fiat 500. If you have any car recommendations, I know this is totally random and not related to anything at all, but has to be automatic, has to have a pretty good size boot where the seats can go down and the dog can go in, and also be small because 
spatial awareness for me are not really friends. Um, that's why I've got a smart car, but need something that has aircon. So if you have any recommendations of good cars that have a super strong aircon that is quite small, please let me know because it's a constant worry. Look who's back. I haven't seen you boys in a while. Hi, you've got so big. You're fully grown now, you're big boys. So I've just gone to pick them up and they've just been chilling here for a second and we're gonna take you to a new home. I'm sure their foster mum is gonna miss them because they've been in her care for a very long time now but they go into their new home and I'm so excited for them. Hi Squish, you've got so big. Would you like a treat for the road? There you go, I'll get you some hay and then we'll go. girl at the vets I think it's so important I feel like a lot of people skip out on making it a positive experience so I was loaded up with a bunch of chicken and hot dogs just like high value treats to make it a really good thing and she didn't even squeal or even notice when she was getting the injection so she did so well although someone else let their dog kind of run and jump at her and I was like she's not had her vaccinations yet also just in case anyone is wondering because she is 10 weeks old now when it comes to tollers it's recommended by like the toller group, um, toller clubs, not to vaccinate them at eight weeks because they can be quite prone to having autoimmune diseases. Um, so just to play it safe. So that's the reason she's had it at 10 weeks old and not eight weeks old. So she's got her next one in four weeks time. So until then, we're going to be doing a lot of socializing and taking her out. I might have to get a dog pram or a dog push chair, which I really didn't want to have to do and look ridiculous because she is getting too heavy to carry around because she's 5.3 kilograms and mummy is very weak mummy's got weak arms but do let me know if there is any dog things you want me to film because she is going to be a huge part of my life and i'm doing constant training and stuff so if you are interested you're slipping interested in that kind of thing let me know and we can show it in a video i was worried she might feel a bit off since her vaccinations but she is her usual crazy self you're a proper little duck dog Yes, you is. What's this? I feel like this last week has truly been the worst. I feel like I just got out of being in the depths of the puppy blues and feeling like I didn't have any time to myself to do anything else rather than just focusing on keeping this puppy alive. I was just starting to get back into a routine and then when my mice passed away, Lark, who was the black and white one, and she's had a few issues here and there, but she was fine. The day before I checked on them all, they were all okay. I had a weird feeling just in general when I came in the room, so it made me check on everyone, and everyone was completely fine. Lark was fine, the other mice were fine, and then just like that the next day, I came in and I found her dead. So that came as a complete shock. In my mind, she wasn't that old. I think roughly she was around 18 months old, based on what her previous owner told me. Because I've been adopting a lot of my mice at six months old, seven months old, I'm losing that chunk of time with them. So she was around 18 months old, but still wasn't expecting it at all. So that was a shock. I wasn't too suspicious at that point until a couple of days later I came in. And as soon as I walked in, I just knew 
but someone else had also gone. So this time it was my mouse April, the one who has the silly ridiculous ears, had the silly ridiculous ears. And at this point, because it's happened so soon after the other one, I'm devastated, I'm confused, I'm freaking out, I'm worried. The others are gonna go because that was so close next to each other. So I'm freaking out there's something contagious that's come in, somehow come in and is wiping out my mice. I'm freaking out, I can't really do anything. Even if I had wanted to send April off to have some sort of post-mortem done, without going into too many graphic details because I know there are some younger viewers watching but it is a reality that sometimes happens and I do get a lot of comments about this basically she must have passed away in the morning kind of in a really awkward spot where she was hidden and I didn't see her through the day basically mice because they are a prey species once mice after they pass away start to have a bit of a smell they don't want predators being attracted to this so as a natural normal behaviour they will start to eat the body to clean up, which is not nice to have to witness. So that had happened when I came in, which was just making it 10 times more awful. So there wasn't really much left of her to investigate internally, I guess, um, which was just horrendous. So couldn't really do anything at that point to investigate if there was something contagious, but just sit and wait to see if anything else happened. And I feel so sorry for the rest of the mice because not sure if you can see all of the upturned items. I've been checking on them and waking the poor things up multiple times a day just to check they're still alive, which isn't ideal, but I'm so paranoid that one of them is also going to go. Luckily, it's been about four or five days since then, and they're all fine. They've got no symptoms. Even Flurry, who is nearing three years old, you'd think it was something highly contagious that would target the weak, the elderly, the young, that it would take him first. So he is still completely fine. The other two in there are also completely fine. But I'm just, I just can't believe that I've gone from having five mice in this to a week having only three in here. So it's been a bit of a shock. I've just been kind of thinking about it. It's been consuming my entire week, just kind of waiting for someone else to go and having an awful feeling that they're gonna go. But I think, fingers crossed, Touch what it was just a horrific coincidence that they both decided to pass away in the same week. I have a good feeling now that it's been a couple of days that the other three are gonna be okay. So please, please keep your fingers crossed. Um, and if anything does happen to any of the others, then I will investigate because it is a bit suspicious. I don't know if anyone else gets like this, but when they have one of the animals pass away that lives in a group, I just get the urge to like deep clean the entire cage and rearrange it and making it a bit more exciting for them to kind of make up for the fact they've lost a friend. So I've left it in this condition because I'm just about to change the bedding and put in all new items. I've got them a bunch of new things which should hopefully cheer them up if they've even noticed at all that their friends are gone and there's now only three of them, which we'll see in a video soon. So I'm gonna go and do that and make it really nice for them because it looks like there's been a tornado but it's just been me and my paranoid anxiety trying to search for them when they've been sound asleep I'm perfectly fine. But that is the end of my May and the end of this vlog. I do of course have to say a big big thank you to all of my channel members. I'll put the names of the wrapped here on screen. Thank you so much for your support during this horrific week and just in general for supporting the channel and me and the pets and to everyone else if you've made it this far in the video. I apologise that this is a really sad ending but I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the vlog. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!